Occasionally, once we've extracted a tooth in the upper arch, let's say it was an upper central incisor, we're gonna have a patient come back to us and they're gonna state that they're in some degree of discomfort, maybe more than they would expect to be at this stage of their healing. Now, what they're also gonna tell you in these situations is that they feel as though they might have had some type of a reaction to the anesthetic, some type of an allergy, and they're not sure if things are normal or not, and that's why they want you to have a look. Now, the reason that they're thinking that they're allergic to the anesthetic, and quite honestly, they're not that far off, it's not an allergy, but they did have some sort of a reaction to it. What they're gonna know is that they're gonna have a sore spot on the palate, and it's gonna feel different on their tongue. So what you're gonna see clinically is a rounded or a well-circumscribed lesion here that's an ulceration in the tissues. Now, it's known as palatal necrosis, and palatal necrosis is caused typically by the epinephrine in our anesthetics. So more common, of course, when you use a higher concentration, like a 1 to 50 or 1 to 100,000 epinephrine. It's also more common when you are re-anesthetizing in an area. So let's say that you did the anesthesia for a patient and something ran long in another room, so you weren't expecting it to go over time. It did, you came back to this patient and you re-injected in that same area. What's happening when you do this is you're constricting the vessels. So when you inject on the palate, you'll observe the blanching of the tissues. That's normal and that's a good thing when you're injecting to see that your injection is being successful. Now, when you do see that though, what you are witnessing is an ischemia of those tissues. Although normally it's temporary, sometimes that will hang around longer than it should, depriving those tissues of oxygen and the tissues eventually die and they slough off. So this is a situation that is totally self-limiting, something that you just need to supportively care for that patient for. So give them, say, NSAIDs if they can tolerate it. You could do twice a day chlorhexidine rinses for about seven to 10 days just to keep things really nice and clean. You could also give them something called Origel or, or a base. So those are two things that you can apply that are basically creams or ointments that can be placed over the area that will have a numbing effect and also a protective effect. So they put a coating on it as it heals. Just reassure them that everything is going to be fine, that this is just a side effect of the anesthetic. Now, this is particularly common in the palate because the perfusion of the palate is maybe not quite what it is in the rest of the mouth, relatively speaking. So there are areas where the blood supply isn't as great as it could be, and therefore it's unable to offset the anesthetic that we're putting in, especially if we're using larger amounts. Now, other reasons that this can occur could be from a latent herpetic infection. So you can also have that or an aptus stomatitis that basically gets reactivated by the injection. Not nearly as common as the epinephrine cause for this, but that is something that it could be as well. If it was herpetic or aptus, probably you're gonna notice a few other areas around here, not just one large lesion. Now, again, very unusual to get any bony involvement, but it is possible. I've seen in reports where there was some necrotic bone associated with the injection. My guess is probably that's to do a bit with the toxicity of the solution being in a larger volume. So somebody may be injected quite a bit into that area. It again would be an outlier sort of a case.